Hi, my name is Keith Cooper of North Flight Images, and in this video, I'm just doing an update to an overview of this, the FF680W print scanner. Now, it's a high speed print scanner. I did a short video when I first got it. Uh, it's basically, if you've got huge, great piles of prints, this is something that you might want to consider if you're scanning archiving prints. Now, I'm going to go through some details in it, but I would say there is a um, written review that goes with this particular uh, device, and that's got all the specs in. It's got lots more photos, lots more detail in it. This is just really an overview of some of the things I did. Some of the questions people asked me, I've addressed in the uh, written review. I'll cover some stuff here, but essentially this is a device that scans both sides of prints. So I can take a print like this, which has got writing on the back. I can stack up prints in this, and there's a wide range of sizes. Um, I'm using the Epson software, the Fast Photo software here, because that automates the process. It even automates um, processing images to help correct color fading, to do various adjustments and things. It saves the original scan and the variation. And also if there's something written on the back, and this one here says Shingle Street, uh, this is this picture here, um, this is uh, me and my dad at Shingle Street uh, on a very windy day. This is on the Suffolk coast. Stack these up, you have to put them in upside down, it goes through. You can correct the angle and things for it. But really, this is, you know, it's a simple device. I'm going to have a look at the speed of it, the, re you know, the resolution, different options for it. Making prints of these is an important thing, I know, to some people. Also, what issues did I discover in using it? Because you can actually scan huge, great panoramic prints um, up to 90 centimeters long in this. You can use some different software with it. You can use it as a document scanner. You can do optical character recognition. I didn't really test that. I was just looking at this as a photo scanner in that instance. But essentially, it has two scanners in one. It has an, a separate scanner for each side of the paper. Uh, one thing you do need to be careful about it is keeping it clean. Now, if I open it up here, you can see all the wheels and various bits and pieces that drag prints through, stop them going through two at a time. If they do go through two at a time, it detects jams. You can, if you're having difficulties, you can set it into a slightly slower mode by pressing the sort of arrow button here. Uh, that will slow things down. But I didn't find any problems with that. But before you put prints into it, before you stack them up and set the size here with that, before you do that, make sure the prints aren't sticking together or anything like that. And they haven't got things like sticky labels on the back of them and other stuff, or staples even, which really would, you know, a device like this does not like staples going through it. But, you know, just take care with it. But in terms of processing speed, three resolutions, as I said, there is 300, DPI, which is fine for sort of general purpose, archiving lots of stuff. 600, which might be better if you're looking to make prints of these, even if you're printing them at the same size. I would say get more detail out of it. It's slightly slower. Now, I'll show the difference here between scanning the three resolutions at 300, 600, 1200. 1200 is interpolated, so it takes a bit longer. Um, you, there are limitations on the quality of the scan here. This is a fast scanner. It is not a top-notch flatbed scanner. If I was going to make very big prints, and there are reasons I might or might not, and I'll come back to that, but if I was going to make very big prints, I definitely want to save those particular prints and do them on a flatbed scanner. Even the quite old, 20 odd years old Epson 1200U flatbed scanner I've got still works fine. I use them with, with ViewScan software, drives it a treat. Um, although the current Epson software does support it as well. But if I wanted to use a flatbed for that, I'd scan at higher resolution. I'd get a greater bit depth as well. Why is bit depth important? Well, I mentioned, and these aren't particularly faded photos, but um, I mentioned that it'll do corrections of photos and you know, on the fly. Um, it scans everything in and then it does the correction and the storage. Now, in doing this, if the prints have faded a lot, some of the adjustment curves you're effectively applying to these are quite 
strong curves. I don't like doing that if I can help it on 8-bit images. So that's 8-bit or 8 bits per color, so 24 bits. Um, the more up work you have to do on an image, the more it shows the limitations. It's much like using JPEG in a camera. JPEGs out the camera, if they come out and they look great, they're great. But if you want to actually do much to change much to lighten areas and do darken areas and things like that, particularly strong changes of colors. So if you've got a print that's gone orange, for example, and there were a few of those I did try, but if you've got a, a print like that, the alterations are quite strong that are required for it. So once again, a better quality scanner. But that's not what this is for. This is for sort of archiving uh, bulk stuff. One thing, if you've got large collections of photos, and um, I, I've got lots of these uh, from, uh, my, my father died last year, and I've got lots of photos of stacks of prints and things. And you, know, you want to do something with them, but just you know, sc scanning them in a flatbed, is gonna take ages. This is really great. Um, I just found, just picked one bunch that was about so thick of pitch, of stack of it, a few hundred pictures. It took me no more than 10 minutes or so to do the scan of all of those. And it recorded the details on the back. And as I say, some of them, it's useful. Now I know where this is, this, this, yeah, this picture here, this is a shingle street. In fact, the picture, the other picture was taken a few years later in my home after I'd had a print done at a large size. That is the view uh, the black and white picture behind me, the Shingle Street picture, is looking in this particular picture here, the one of both of us at the beach, is that direction. Um, and curiously enough, the camera that my dad's holding there is an Olympus. I think that's an OM10. It could have been an OM40, I'm not sure. But anyway, the lens on it, there's a 50-50 chance that that lens, that 24mm lens on that, is the one that I'm actually filming this on today. Um, I've got two... 24mm uh, f2.8 Olympus lenses from there. One that was mine, one that was my dad's. And one of them is sitting on the EOS RP that I use for filming this. Um, I don't know which is which though. So yeah, I'd say 50-50 chance it's that. I'm fairly certain though, that one's got a lens hood on it. So the lens hood was one, I mean, it was my dad's. But anyway, that's that. Um, how good is it for doing this? Well, as I say, for archiving, it's great. If you want to do print, and I say the bit depth is, a, is an issue. If you want to do print, do it at the 600 if you're just reproducing or making prints slightly larger. But really, if you want to make them big from this, that are ideally, if you want to do, say, a big print like this, then first up, the print has to be good enough quality. And you quickly find with lots of old photos, the print quality is, you know, it could have been the lens, it could have been anything. Or in many of these, certainly if my mum took them, there would be camera shake. And the fact that she always had difficulty with viewfinders, um, never quite to got grips with the with framing and getting people into pictures. That's why on this particular picture here, uh, certainly that one there, it's why me and my dad have got our feet chopped off the bottom. But if you look at black and white, older black and white images, they're often incredibly detailed. They may have been taken on larger format film. They might be contact prints. They might be slightly enlarged. You find that often these old black and white pictures, apart from lasting a lot longer and a lot better than the color ones, certainly from the 60s, 70s, 80s, um, these black and white ones, the amount of detail you can pull out of them is way beyond what this can comfortably produce. So certainly for black and white, for archiving, this is great because the key is it gets the job done. Um, the number of people I've heard of who've started off projects at archiving family uh, photos that they've found and then just got bored stiff after a while, just haven't quite got around to it. This lets you finish it. Um, if you've got delicate pictures, there's a little plastic wallet you can put them in and run it through. It will take panoramics, as I say, it take much bigger pictures than this. But really, this is one for bulk use. Now, what issues did I find? Keep it clean. As I said, you open this up and there are two windows on either side for the front, the back of the picture. Make sure you use uh, um, a soft you know, microfiber cloth or something like that. Clean it every so often. 
if you're using this for sort of proper archiving purposes and you're you know, scanning thousands and thousands of images, uh, it, the rubber rollers on it are replaceable parts, about 40 odd quid. Um, they are, it's many tens of thousands of scans it will do before those rollers wear out. But you can check in the Epson utility to see the lifetime of, of the device here. Yeah, and it's, re it's replaceable, it's easy to do. So I've got, you know, a scanner. Anything not to like? Well, I'm going to be blunt about it. If you buy one of these, it's nearly 500 quid. Now, 500 pounds depends how important your archive is to you. Um, but think about if you get one of these, um, have a look on eBay and the likes of that, because I'm sure other people have rushed into buying ones and decided, oh, uh, now what am I going to do with it? It's just taking up space. Think also whether there are other family members who might have photo archives or things like that who might find a use for it. Now, if you've got, it works as a general purpose document scanner as well, but it's a bit excessive unless you have an awful lot of paper documents that need doing. But it'll do that as well. As I say, the feed works very reliably. I had no misfeeds, I had no pictures, but I say, be careful with delicate pictures. If you've got delicate pictures, put them in the little scan folder and do that, and then that'll go through. You have to do them one at a time. But for prints like this, anything else? Oh, one little bit. If you've got more modern prints, the images may have been produced electronically. Even though it's off film, the film may have been scanned and then printed. You may find that when you scan at high resolution, there is a very fine grid pattern on your images. Uh, unfortunately, that's there. That's an artifact of it. Now, there may be ways of getting around it but um, in your editing, but you're going to have to edit individual images there. Um, I only noticed it when I zoomed in on this particular one here, that there was a slight patterning. And I suspect it was because it's not a film to print print, but a film to scan, scan to print. And that's an issue for it there. So, um, a very nice little device. Have a read of the review because as I say, I've got four, far more detail I've put into that. Um, it just works well. Um, it's easy to use. Um, I just popped it in. Easy to install everything. Um, yeah, what's not to like? Ooh. Still not sure what I'd do with one if after I got it. Anyway, this one's going back to Epson, who I should thank for lending it to me. And uh, I've got now lots of scam family photos have been scanned. So thanks for watching. And uh, if you've got any questions, just let me know. Bye.